Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today we're going to be talking about the books that I read in the later half of November. If you want to watch all the books that I read from November 1st to the 15th, I will link the mid-month wrap-up that I made down below, but these are the eight books that I read from the 15th to the 30th, so the last half of the month. I know eight might not seem like a lot compared to earlier in the month. I think I read over 12, possibly 15. I don't remember. I don't keep count, honestly. Um, like I probably keep, I keep count for the video. And then once I'm done with the video, the number is gone out of my brain. So, um, I've just have been having some things going on. I've been trying to date, which is in and of itself a thing, okay? And um, just trying other things. I'm just not prioritizing reading like I used to because I used to not do some of the things that I'm doing currently <laughs> because more things are taking up my time. And I'm totally okay with that, that is totally fine. Let's talk about these eight books. The book that I read after my mid-month wrap-up is For Butter or Worse by Erin LaRosa. The hero and the heroine of the story are co-hosts of a kind of like, think Top Chef kind of show. Um, but they do not get along whatsoever and the heroine in here actually faces a lot of internet hate because of the sexist comments that the hero has unintentionally made on the show and um, the heroine just hates him because of that. She feels like she's become like a laughing stock and these two people are actually owners of a really popular and well-known restaurants as well. The hero is the son of the man who created a very large Italian restaurant chain and the heroine actually created her own like very high-end restaurant. Anyways, so at the beginning of the story, they're doing a show and the heroine is just sick of this guy. So she full on just blatantly tells the audience live like, this is gonna be my last show, like I'm done. And the hero is like, what? <laughs> like he didn't realize how far his jokes and prodding, he just thought they were bantering, like got to her. Um, and she's like, yeah, no, I'm just gonna now focus on my restaurant. You can have the show, it's totally fine. And the network has told him it's you with her or you're not in the show at all. So um, he is trying to convince her to come back on the show with him. Both of their businesses are also going under, like they're not getting a lot of publicity a lot of people are not coming they're having a lot of slow nights um, but then whenever he comes to beg for forgiveness essentially outside the back end of her restaurant he trips and falls and she kind of catches him when he stumbles and paparazzi take pictures and think they're in a tryst of sorts that they're together when in actuality they're not and it kind of makes an uproar at both of their restaurants if you will and they realize their little relationship that does not exist in the media, um, has sparked some popularity in both of their restaurants. And so they decide to fake date. This was really promising at the beginning. Like everything I just told you, that's the beginning of this book. Um, it's the fake dating and on that I was just a little bit bored by, honestly. It just wasn't my favorite thing in the world. I ended up giving it three stars. I just wish the book was paced like the first part, if that makes sense. I decided to pick up some dark romance. It's been a while since I picked up a dark romance because um, I feel like a lot of them, like Mafia, aren't really on audio a lot of the time. But I found these three dark romance books on my Libby. And uh, let me just tell you, I don't know what to think. <laughs> I had never read an Adelaide Forest book before this point. I think she does have a fantasy romance pen name though. I think it's Harper L. Woods and I've read the first book in that fantasy romance series. So I have read one under her pen name, but I've never read her contemporary, like darker romances. And I don't know what to think. I don't know if I like them. I don't know if I hate them. My mind is just boggled by these three books. <laughs> so the one that started it all, I listened to this almost entirely in a day because I was working on some stuff. I was working on some like calligraphy stuff at home and I just plugged this bad boy in and like, like a lot of my time writing these, my eyes just bulging out of my head being like, what is going on <laughs> reading this book? Okay, so this is the first book in the Beauty and Lies series called Until Tomorrow Comes. The hero of the story is a large mafia boss. Like he's huge. He's from Ibiza and he comes to America to do some like mafia stuff with American people. And uh, one day he's helping a guy out in a mafia family he's coming to visit and he gets out of the car to help him and across the street a girl and her friend 
who turns out to be her cousin, I'm pretty sure, are walking down the street. And from that point, this like 40 year old man almost like looks at this girl and is like, that woman's mine. Like just from looking at her across the street, he's never really had the inkling, the itch, the need to have a wife be with a woman monogamously. Like that is not in the cards for him. He doesn't think from the moment he just looks at this girl across the street, he's like, that's all changed now. And then he realizes that she is 16 years old. Or is it 17? I don't know. 16 or 17, okay? And um, he's going to wait until she turns 18 and then take her. Whether she's willing or not. <laughs> like, what? I was, like, baffled by some of the things this hero did. Like, some of his mafia men are in the younger range. And so he makes one of them be a high school student at the high school and befriend Issa, this girl, and become very close to her so he can know everything about her. I don't even want to talk about the rest because I feel like it'd be a spoiler, but like he then, like after she runs 18, like gets into her life in a way she cannot escape. She can't escape it. And it's absolutely wild. This book is wild. I didn't know what to rate it. This man is absolutely unhinged unhinged. I'll talk about book two in a second. Book two is even like he's even worse. Like this one was good. Like it was good. Like I was very much entertained. Number two, I'll talk about it in a second, but I do want to mention the tropes in this one in case you are interested. Um, age gap, it's a dark romance, kidnapping, mafia romance, a possessive hero. He stalks her, so it's a stalker romance and touch her and die. Okay, so number two is I immediately jumped into book number two because I'm like, what? Okay, so Until Forever Ends. By the way, there are, I think there's four books in this series all about the same couple. And huh, this book is even more bizarre than number one. I thought I'd maybe found a series that could like marathon all four books, but after reading this one, I decided I'm not continuing on with this series. This series is just not it for me. I didn't think this was a bad book by any means. I still did not give it a rating. I've been like, been, when I don't know what to rate a book now, I just won't rate it and I don't really care. Like I'm not gonna stew in it and figure it out in my brain. Like if I don't know, if I, don't have it in my heart when I finish the book like oh yeah this was a four star read like I just won't read it like I don't want to stew on it I want to pick up my next read you know um and who this man is brutal just to be brutal which are not my kind of men even in a dark romance like he is just brutal because he has daddy issues I'm like like figure it go to therapy fix your daddy issues <laughs> And then like, I think everything will be fine, dude. He did some things to this heroine that I feel like are unforgivable. So I'm done with him. <laughs> I'm done with him. I honestly got very frustrated with the heroine also because he was doing these horrible things to her, but she couldn't help but also be like in love with him at the same time. And I'm like, girl, this is not healthy. What are you doing? Anyway, I am done with that series, but I had a very entertaining time reading these two. Um, there's probably like every trigger one you could possibly think of with these the series I assume the whole series has these as well but the first two books there's like SA dubious consent kidnapping these are just off the top of my head there's more in like goodreads reviews from my friends and other people that I know um there's like a, actually a whole goodreads account where they just list the trigger warnings in the um reviews that they have so anyway um there's also one for like branding torture violence blood gore like it's so, um, yeah, take with that what you will. And then I just thought, you know what? Let's pick up another Adelaide Forest book because why not? And <laughs> I think I might be done. I don't know. Y'all, this book, this is called Wrong by Adelaide Forest. Another book that I have no clue what to think about. <laughs> Literally, my review says I have no clue what to think of this. <laughs> with no star rating, like, no, no idea. No clue. This is a dad's best friend romance. And at times this was very icky to me. <laughs> like really icky to me. Oh my gosh. Like I don't want to yuck people's yums, but like some of like, like it's weird because he is a lot older than the heroine. I've read books with dad's best friends where the heroine or the, the hero knows the heroine since she was born, like a baby. But like the, the the author writes it to where it's not icky to me because no feelings have like popped up like at 
all like their whole lives until the heroine is like way older like way older like torn by Kira and Cole did this really well like really really well um or they just don't know each other you know what I mean anyway the one when they start out was babies though it's a really hard sell for me if the hero knows the heroine since she was born like it's a really hard sell for me that's why I didn't really want to read torn when I read it but I ended up loving it because the author like she did it so well this one left me just kind of icky like, I feel icky when I read um, step-sibling romances, when the step-siblings have known each other since they were, like, children. Like, those, I feel icky with those as well, so. <laughs> like, I don't know. It's just, it, mm, it gives me the ick. And that's all I can really remember about this book, honestly, that it was, like, bizarre and left me a little icky, but then I also liked parts of it, you know what I mean? I don't know. Adelaide Forrest, I feel like, is a very complicated author for me. I don't know what to think of her. I don't know what to feel. I have no clue. I then finally read a book that I knew what I wanted to write it. This is The Plus One by Maisie Eddings. This was my second book by this author and I thoroughly loved it, okay? This is about Indira and Jude and they've known each other since they were children. Jude is Indira's brother's best friend. Jude is staying at her brother's house for the time being um, for the wedding that is going on because he had to take a break from work and a leave from work. Um, he works overseas in war countries and um, is a doctor and that has really sparked mental hardships in him to a point where he he hates he hates his job he hates feeling like he loses way more lives than he does save them like that is definitely detrimental to your brain like it is detrimental to your mental health and it has wrecked him in a lot of ways and he has not really been the same since He's experienced all this, but he has to go back because he can't afford um, college any other way. So Judah and Indira do not get along at all. They've always bantered and bickered and like disliked each other. <laughs> Before the wedding, at the beginning of this book, Indira's scum of a boyfriend cheats on her and the boyfriend just happens to be in the wedding party. He's uh, the other groom's cousin. And so she's gonna be forced to see her ex-boyfriend now and the girl that she he cheated on her with at the wedding like the whole time and to make him jealous essentially and show that she's completely over him, she asks Jude to fake date her. And like any fake dating romance, these two spark actual real feelings for one another. And it was very beautiful to witness. I think there are certain books out there that you read at the absolute perfect moment in your life. And I feel like this was one for me. I'm getting goosebumps right now talking about this. This book was read in like a perfect point in my life when I needed it. There are some books when you read a book and you're like, you finish it and you're like, I needed that. I, that connected to me in a way that I needed to hear like right now. Jude the hero spoke to me in more ways than one, in too many ways, I think. <laughs> and I don't think I've related more to a hero in a book in a very long time. I've experienced his pain and his panic in different scenarios, of course, but I just felt for this man and I connected to him in a way that I hate how I connect to him. I hate how other people have felt the way that I have felt. And I know he's fictional, okay? But he's also a representation of other people out there who have experienced the same panic and anxiety that I have. And it is awful. I loved Indira as well because she is definitely there to help him process what he is going through. He's going through quite a lot and Indira is there for him every single step of the way despite their bickering and bantering. Once she realizes something serious is going on with Jude, she is there and buckled in to help him. I'm a sucker for a caretaker. I love people who are caretakers and Indira just like grew on my heart. Dark sugar wounds in here for PTSD, panic attacks, parental abandonment, and a partner cheating on you. For tropes, I have fake dating, brother's best friend, mental health representation, a wedding setting, great banter, no third act breakup, rivals to lovers, and forced proximity. I gave this book five out of five stars. Next, I have Releasing Maladek by Victoria Abilene. This is book number 5.5 in the Clicanian Alien Romance series that I really enjoy. This one is a little bit unique compared to the other books in the Clicanian series. I think this is the first novella in the series as well, um, but every other book in the series has all taken place on the planet Clicania, and it's a romance with one of the alien heroes from that planet and a human woman who has crash landed there. However, this story is about a human woman named Katie who has been an alien. Uh, she was previously an alien slave, but then she got hired 
to uh, work for this alien prince and be his, um, one of his like servants, kind of maids if i don't really know there's like a specific alien term for it but i don't i don't remember what it is anyway she's gonna basically assist she's the prince's assistant but then the spaceship that she's on crash lands on a dangerous planet with dangerous people that have hypnotized all the other aliens apparently she cannot be hypnotized and she goes into the like she sneaks into their compound to kind of free her friends and maladek ends up convincing her to release him from the cage she's very hesitant at first but thinks that this alien can help her and he does but he doesn't take her to her friends at first he immediately runs the other way and finds refuge for her because he immediately knows after sending her that this is his fated mate so fated mate romance it's not my favorite in the series, unfortunately. I'm giving this one three stars just because I feel like I wanted more and I really love the Clicanian planet and the setting. I didn't really care about these other aliens and this other planet we were on. Like, I just wanted to learn about the hero and Katie and I felt like a lot of like the outside stuff was taking away from that. Next is one that I have been wanting to read for quite a long time. This is Bring Down the Stars by Emma Scott, the first book in her Beautiful Hearts duet. I have been putting this book off for quite a while because... I knew that it was a love triangle and love triangles are huge like sell for me okay like you're gonna have to convince me like convince me to read a book if I know it has a love triangle unless it's Twilight or the Hunger Games like yes but I don't see those as love triangles because you knew who they were gonna pick in the end you know what I mean and this is what also confused me with this book is because the love triangle aspect in here is not like Candy Steiner's love triangle duet. You don't know in that duet by Candy Steiner who she gonna pick. Like I had no clue who she was gonna pick in the end. That's, I feel like it's a true love triangle. You don't know who she's gonna choose. In this book, you're only getting the perspective of one guy, one guy. And you you, you know who it's gonna, like, like, oh, that's, that's gonna be the hero. That's gonna be him. So the heroine here is Autumn and she goes to college. This is set in college. This first book is at least, I have not picked up book two. I'm waiting on my Libby hold. So I'm probably gonna read it before the end of the year. Um, but anyway, Autumn in here is a college student and on campus one day she ends up meeting this stunning guy who's like jock-esque named Connor. He's kind of like the campus it guy. And um, this is her love trying romance with him and his best friend Weston. Okay, Weston is the guy we get the perspective from in here. So you kind of know who I think she's gonna pick in the end. I actually don't know though. I haven't read the second book. No clue. She really loves Connor's infectious energy and his like love for life, but she loves his words and his poetry like to a point she can't really verbalize and she just falls in love with his writing. Little does she know that Connor has not been writing those poems, has not been writing those letters. His good best friend Weston has been. And the things get a little bit more complicated when she starts having feelings for Connor's best friend. When she's like, what is going on? Why? Um, so I obviously didn't like the lying and secret keeping part because that's a big like no-no for me. I don't mess with liars. I don't mess with secret keepers. Like, no. Okay, and that was a big like, ooh, red flag for me. <laughs> So I thought this was a great start to the duet. I really hope that things get revealed in a way that everything like ends up okay in book two. And I'm really excited to read about like the conclusion of their story. I just wanted like, I wanted something nice to happen to Weston. Like things were going horribly for Weston, like this whole book. And I'm like, just let something happen that is good for him. <laughs> and I felt like that wasn't really happening in this book. So like, I was trying to cheer for him and it wasn't working. So I'm really hoping something happens in book two. I'm just really curious to see how things play out in the second book in this duet. Like Emma Scott slaps with her duets, with her books in general. Um, and the only reason why I'm picking up this love triangle romance is because Emma Scott wrote it. Okay, so tropes in here, it's angsty as heck, okay? It's a love triangle, college set, forbidden longing, okay? It's a duet and it's on Kindle Unlimited. And the last book that I have to mention for my November wrap up is Mixed Signals by BK Borison. I am finally caught up with the Love Light Farm series. I am so happy with myself. Layla and Caleb both live in this very small town. I love this small town. It reminds me of Stars Hollow from Gilmore Girls and I'm obsessed with it. Okay, so I love this small town. Anyway, they both are from this small town and they both have the same problem. Their dating life is 
awful. One day they both end up like word vomiting all of their dating issues to each other and their solution is to go out on dates with each other and figure out what issues they have in dating that the other person can like figure out for them and they can work on them. So it's kind of like a fake dating if you will. And obviously with their dating, fake dating scenarios, dates, whatever the case may be, they end up developing real feelings for each other. Caleb may or may not have been like in love with Layla for like a very long time, but Layla never really like opened her eyes to the man right in front of her. So it's her discovering her feelings for this amazing man. He is amazing. I loved this book. I loved how sweet Caleb was. I love a sweet man. I love a sentimental hero. Like, and he totally is like, this is a sunshine, sunshine romance. And I've realized like how much I love those. <laughs> Layla was also so sweet. And I loved her passion for baking as a baker myself. Like I loved it so much. And Caleb was just like smitten as a kitten. And his words like almost made me drool. Like I, whew, the things this man says. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So safe to say this is my favorite book in the series actually. I know that's kind of like, a flip for a lot of people. A lot of people love like In the Weeds or Love Light Farms the most, but this one has both of them beat for me. Tropes in this one, it's sunshine, sunshine, like I said. There's baking, fake dating, there's a kissing in the rain scene. I am obsessed with kissing in the rain scenes and I feel like more books need them. <laughs> Small town and you have a golden retriever hero. I gave this book five out of five stars. I adored it. Anyways, there you have it. Those are all of the books that I read in the later half of November. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to or what your favorite book was in November. I would love to know. If you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me a strawberry emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.